I'd like to share with you guys something that I'd been speaking with um, Jonathan Mover, who's a good friend of mine, also a studio owner in uh, New York City. Uh, I'd uh, been over to his uh, studio and I was doing a recording with this fellow named Jeffrey Wilgus, who's sort of like a Broadway cabaret kind of dude. And um, he has a new drum magazine and we were discussing a lot about studio and studio stuff because that's basically what we both work in most of our lives now. And he, uh, he brought to the fore this whole concept that he wanted to do a, a segment on what it's like to play 25 milliseconds behind the beat, right on the beat, and then 25 milliseconds ahead of the beat. And we sort of came into discussing this whole concept that basically in studio drumming and in modern studio drumming, that is the world that the drummer lives in. We live in a 50 millisecond world. 1 20th of one, sec uh, one, 20th of one second is the world that we navigate. When you play 25 milliseconds or anywhere between right on and 25 milliseconds above the click or ahead of the click, you always have this energy, this forward momentum kind of a feeling. When you play anywhere from the click to 25 milliseconds behind the click, you have this draped, heavy, thicker feeling. You feel like everything is being weighted down. This has tremendous impact and relevance when you're in the studio because it's not just enough anymore to have a click track and play very mechanically to it. There are tons of machines that do that, and in fact, the machines have gained a lot of prevalence for specifically being able to do that. What I've found with the increasing amounts of studio work that I do is I need to juice up the track based on what it is that I'm hearing and what it is that I'm feeling within the music and the vibe of the artist. So you'll get certain artists that are very uh, acoustic guitar people that have a lot of driving energy to them and they're dun 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 and I can't lay back in those contexts. So in a context like that, so if somebody were to play uh, that kind of an acoustic part, I might play something in a pop or pop rock setting like In that context, I have to bring energy and forward momentum. So the feeling that gets transmitted is very, it's like a train moving forward aggressively. But many occasions, and people like Jim Keltner, Charlie Watts, many of the great drummers of the 60s, the 50s, the 60s, and some of the 70s had developed this very beautiful ability to play behind the beat. In other words, in that 25 millisecond zone behind the beat. Now when we're talking about 25 milliseconds, we're talking there 1 40th of one second. So we're not talking about a huge amount of time. But understand that that amount of time is twice as small. In other words, passes by twice as quickly as a professional baseball player standing at bat facing a 96 or 97 mile an hour fastball from a pitcher and trying to catch up with it to hit it with the bat. The level of precision and vibe that has to be brought to bear in a studio today is actually very, very significant. And to demonstrate playing behind the beat, I'm going to play one of my favorite grooves, uh, which is a Led Zeppelin groove. Uh, by John Bonham, and when the levee breaks, it's a perfect example of how to thicken and bring some undertow into a musical situation. And it's what I always reference when I'm asked to vibe something in that thicker zone, that lower 25 millisecond.
that's the world I live in 20 days of the month in the recording studio. I'm very you know, privileged to be a partner in a studio right in Times Square. We have a lot of great artists that come through. Everybody from Timberlake to Alicia Keys uh, to, uh, I mean, you name it. Uh, really, really great stars. One of the, my favorites recently was actually Debbie Gibson, who's somebody from my youth, was very popular, and then we hadn't heard from her in quite a while. And she came in and did some great work at the studio. And the different producers that work with the different artists also have their own taste. They have their own preferences. So in a, in a more punk type situation, you're definitely going to have that energy, that forward momentum. But in a lot of the Carrie Underwood style music situations, you need to be very poised and have that undertone and create almost, carve out this zone for all the other instruments to really sit and breathe beauty into the music. Um, so this 25 milliseconds ahead of the beat, <clears throat> 25 milliseconds behind the beat. This 50 millisecond world is essentially the modern world of where studio drummers live.